George Lucas shares his thoughts on what cinema will look like in the next 10 years. Yes, at the Cannes Film Festival, George Lucas was honored for his Lifetime Achievement Award and participated in several interviews, sharing information about his upcoming as a director and creator, working on Star Wars, and just answering questions about cinema in general. Now, while there wasn't a lot of new information regarding Star Wars or anything of the sorts that we didn't already kind of know, I did want to touch on this little bit and where George was asked what he thinks cinema will look like in the next 10 years. He kind of subtly takes shots at Disney and new corporations, or not new corporations, but corporations nowadays and how they go about cinema. Uh, he states that there's a lot of sequels, a lot of watered down things, a lot of remakes, and just really gives his take on the current state of films. I'm gonna get into this article here provided by Forbes. I usually kind of word things my own way, but in this, I wanted to really get the quotes off, get some structure in it, and I think they worded this perfectly. So shout out to Forbes. I'm going to leave the article in the description if you want to read it for yourself, and then I'm going to get into my thoughts on this at the end of the video. So we're going to jump right into this article and hear what George had to say. Star Wars creator George Lucas says at the Cannes Film Festival that there's almost no critical thinking in Hollywood. Lucas was in the south of France Saturday to receive an honorary Palme d'Or, which is the Cannes Film Festival's highest honor. Lucas's fellow film legend Meryl Streep was also awarded an honorary Palme d'Or at the beginning of the 77th edition of the annual festival, which kicked off on May 14th. Answering a question from French media outlet Brut about where the state of movies will be in 10 years, Lucas said, the same thing will be happening that's happening now. Unfortunately, the now for Hollywood, Lucas added, is that the film industry has run out of ideas for new stories. Quote, what happens now, and it happens in streaming probably more than the features, but features, it's the same thing. Nobody knows what to do. The stories they're telling are just old movies. Let's do a sequel. Let's do another version of this movie. And it's not just in movies, but in almost everything. There's almost no original thinking, end quote. Lucas wasn't the first film great to make pointed comments about Hollywood at the Cannes Film Festival. Earlier in the annual event, Lucas's longtime friend and mentor, Francis Ford Coppola, noted how Hollywood was facing a dire future. Quote, I fear that the film industry has become more of a matter of people being hired to meet their debt obligations because the studios are in great, great debt. And the job is not so much to make good movies. The job is to make sure they pay their debt obligations. The timing couldn't have been any better for Lucas to be in the south of France since Francis Ford Coppola was on hand to present the fellow filmmaker his Palme d'Or at the Cannes Film Festival on Saturday. Coppola traveled to Cannes this year for the world premiere of the sci-fi epic Megalopolis along with several of the film stars including Adam Driver, Natalie Emanuel, Giancarlo Esposito, Lawrence Fishburne, and Aubrey Plaza. In his remarks before awarding Lucas the Palme d'Or, Coppola reflected on their decades-old relationship as friends and collaborators, which began in 1968. Lucas first worked with Coppola on the musical comedy classic Finney and Rainbow, starring Fred Astaire. Calling the beginning of their working relationship, Coppola, 85, had a very important suggestion that he made to Lucas, who recently turned 80 at the beginning of the production. Quote, Pleased to have someone in my own generation, I suggested he come every day, but only on one condition, that he come up with a brilliant suggestion every day, which he constantly did. Coppola said it during his introduction of Lucas. And with that began an association that has lasted a lifetime, and he went on and on, making film history, story history, business history, and now history in France. Naturally, Coppola's introduction included a Star Wars story, where he recalled how Lucas told him about how the owners of Flash Gordon comic strip turned down the young filmmaker's pitch to make it a movie. Quote, he looked at me and said, well, I'll make my own movie. I'll call it Star Battles or Star Wars or something, Coppola recalled. And so he did, and in the process, risked everything he had to make it. So again, there is that article from Forbes that is in the description if you want to read it for yourself and get kind of more in depth with it. There's some good images to go along with it of George receiving his award. And of course, included is those quotes where he kind of just strikes down current Hollywood. Now, before we get into this, just a huge congratulations to George. I know he is 100 million percent probably not hearing this, but just as a fan to fans, this is an award not to scoff at. Uh, he's definitely deserved this, and it's great he's starting to get some really well-deserved critical recognition, receiving awards for his work, not only on Star Wars, but just for cinema in general. And everything we see today uh, can be attributed to George Lucas. I know a lot of people don't agree with that, but digital technology, CGI, everything we see just over abundantly in current cinema is all thanks to George Lucas. 
and it's great to see him getting recognized and receiving these awards. Now, as far as what he had to say on current cinema, I could not agree with more, and I think that is the general consensus around the internet. For the last few years, at the minimum, and it's kind of come more into light now that George has gotten on this huge stage and made some comments about it. This, again, also being one of his first interviews in years. I can't remember the last time we saw an interview from George besides, I feel like there was one a couple of years ago, and then, of course, there was a lot around the time where he sold Star Wars and Lucasfilm to Disney. But that's besides the point. These comments are, <laughs> I think, what everybody has been thinking for a while. There's so much dilution in Hollywood there's so many sequels, unnecessary prequels, series, just quick, spit it out, digest it, and then, like, spit it out again. Like, the company, these corporations are just feeding us trash, and I think it's starting to get to a point where we're over it, and George Lucas speaks for a lot of us. Like, he said, there's just, again, no originality. There are a few movies that I can think of in the last five to six, seven, eight, nine, maybe even going back 10 years that were great original concepts. We see a lot of great original concepts coming from studios such as A24. But outside of that, there's all not that much, there's not that much to write home about. Again, if you look at any of the blockbuster films that have come out recently, it's a lot of franchises, sequels, prequels, a lot of series just diluting streaming. And he's absolutely right in what he's saying. And unfortunately, I think that is what cinema is going to be now. He said he doesn't see it changing in the next 10 years. It's going to be exactly what it is now because that is unfortunately what is making the money. Even when it doesn't make the money, the studios don't listen. They just keep putting it out. And like he said, that is because the studios are in debt. Everybody's in debt. They are just putting out what pays the bills. It's not about storytelling. It's not about passion. It's not about creating impactful legendary characters anymore it's solely for greed and solely for money and this is a very sad realization and it is very sad to hear george talk about things like this because as someone who was so creative and outside of the box and didn't listen to the big studios he's been telling us this forever and now it's just starting to get recognized which is great but also sad that it's taken him until the year the age of 80 years old to get this sentiment across and wake people up. But yeah, that is my short thoughts about that. I could talk about this for days. Maybe someday when I get on the podcast grind, uh, we'll bring this back up and we'll have an in-depth discussion about it. I think that would be really fun. But for now, again, that is all I have to say. I am excited to hear your guys' thoughts on this in the comments below. I'm looking forward to reading those. So make sure to leave some for me to check up on in the following days. Also, while you're at it, leaving those comments, please make sure to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed, and of course, subscribe to the channel if you're new. I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.